What's up guys and gals on the internet? Welcome to the DL40 Forecast, where we give you the download on all the forecasting nerd news that we find interesting. Not that you might not find interesting, but maybe you will, maybe you won't. Frankly, we don't really care. This podcast is basically what we like, our opinions on subjects, and it may be controversial to you. So you know what, if you're very sensitive, if you're a social justice warrior, or you just got thick or thin skin, not even thick skin, this is for thick skin people. If you got thin skin, or you need your safe space, there's the door, there's the red button, click it off. I like that, I like that. And just remember, at DL44, Han Solo always shoots first. Damn straight he does. Just like we do with our opinions. Because you guys may not like us, or you may like us, you may agree with us. You might like some of the stuff I say, you might like some of the stuff he says, and vice versa. Anyways, we're your hosts, this is... My name is Rockman X 4 and this is... I'm Green Cotter. You guys already know what it is. If you follow my other channels on Cottolution, you already know what this is going to be about. So, I guess to start off today, this is going to be the very first episode of the DL44 cast. Number one. Yep, number one, the very first time. This is basically like the pilot episode. It's a podcast about nothing. We're it's, the Seinfeld of the internet. It's like DC Comics rebirth, rebirth of New 52, New 2. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're, we are basically like the bat sex scene in The Killing Joke. We're not quite necessary, but you realized you still kind of enjoyed it. Whether you, whether you liked it or didn't like it, you were entertained in some strange, sick way. Yeah. So it's so, good. Pretty much. So I'm going to give you what our formula for the future is. We're going to cover, cover a couple subjects, what we actually want to do today. But in the future, our format is basically going to be we're going to have our laptop right here. And we're going to have set <laughs> subjects that we want to talk about, maybe stuff that we want to look at, uh, things that popped up in the nerd culture, things that are in the future, stuff that maybe we want to happen. Maybe we'll do a few reviews for you, like on a video game or a movie, our thoughts, simple stuff like that. Really, it's a podcast about nothing but it's also a podcast about everything, oh, as yeah. long as we care about it. So today, this is going to be the pilot, guys. We hope you enjoy. We hope you'll subscribe. We hope you stay with us and just enjoy us on this journey because we're going to have fun making it, and we hope you guys have fun watching it. We're going to dive deep, deep down that rabbit hole, and just it'll be nothing but adventure. Yeah. So what we're going to do is start getting into it. Since we don't have access to the Internet right now, Long story short, we just don't have the password to access it. Yeah. So what we we're going to do... Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like I said, we're kind of testing things out right now. We don't really know what we're doing at this point because it's episode one. But what we are going to get into is something a lot of people have talked about that we kind of want to give our opinions on. And that's Batflex new techno or technical armored bat suit, whatever you want to call it. So I was on the internet the other morning before my kid went to school and I was on IGN and I was surfing through everything and I had saw that they had an article that Batman is going to have a new tactical suit for Justice League in theaters coming out. And uh, I didn't know what to think exactly. I was kind of impressed, not too impressed though. I mean, it looks like Batman, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like he's wearing weird, weird ski goggles and, and I don't know. See, that's where I come from with this Batsuit. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm the Valley's Dark Knight. Knows I love Batman. I love all the suits, even from the Keaton body-turning suit all the way to uh, Christian Bell's actual mobile suit. And I like Ben Affleck as Batman. A lot of people say he's the best Batman. I will dispute that because, really, if he's the best Batman, why hasn't he been in a good movie yet? I like Dawn of Justice somewhat. I enjoy Suicide Squad, but critically, those are not good movies. Even though they're not good, though, I think that you would have to admit that the one thing that wasn't bad about them was Batfleck. This is true, but I also want to ask, like, was Batfleck really that good? Or was just he moderately okay, but everything else was so much crap that it made it seem like he was amazing? I think you have to say he was good, otherwise your brand you, like, on the nipple or twist your forehead or something weird or kinky like that. That's how he rolls. He was up on Lex Luthor in jail threatening to burn in his ass and he's going to be on him watching him like sting that is very true this batman does kill people which i'm not opposed to sleeping sleeping bed they, they were sleeping no they're dead those fools <laughs> are dead you do not get a big old crate box slammed against your head and have your blood splatter on the wall behind you and be like oh he's sleeping no that dude dead i was more shocked at the fact that in the uh director's cut rated r version of uh dawn of justice when um batman's in the big fight saving up uh, martha right martha um, why guy, did you say that name? <laughs> oh, 
Um, he gets stabbed, right? And then in the other one, he just like kind of knocks the guy out, stabs him against the wall, goes on his way. But in the director's cut, he's a dude, he's a gangster, man. He goes he, right back up, and after he stabbed him against the wall, and, and he, he guts punches him. him right in the dick. No, I thought he punched no, him in the he dick. he guts him. Are you sure? He, he guts him with the gauntlet. Oh, I... He guts him with the gauntlet. With how low that punch was and the way he screamed, I thought it was a dick shot. No, he guts him with the gauntlet, which I thought was All awesome. Right. I, I love that. But uh, trying to stay on topic, because this is about Batflick's new suit, I like aspects <sighs> of it. Now... It looks basically like Batflex suit from Dawn of Justice, just with armor padding on it. And glasses, because you can't see now. Yeah, and, I, and I'm okay with the armor padding, because, I mean, I'm a big fan of Christian Bell. Mm-hmm. His whole suit, its whole motif was just armor. I'm okay with that. What I kind of don't like about it is, in a way, it looks like bad cosplay, because it just looks like bricks put onto the normal bat suit. It doesn't really look integrated. It just looks like they're like, hey, let's take the bat suit, and let's put, like, the same color things on him to make it look like armor hopefully it will look better it's just one picture so i'm not going to judge it that much but one thing i will judge it on is why does he wear sunglasses is this the watchman is he what's that guy's name the owl man um the, uh, you know what i feel i feel ashamed of myself i should know watchman's got dr manhattan all i know is watchman's got, got um, blue penis that's got, all i know yeah, about watchman blue, blue penis rorschach a little bit of rorschach a lot of blue penis too uh, much blue owl penis. man, I think of this owl man. Or not I don't owl. know. I mean, you people on the internet right now are gonna be like, "Shut the fuck up, you ugly fuck!" You, you don't know the names of the Watchmen. Well, no, I don't. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> to be honest, I hate the Watchmen. I'm gonna say that right now. I'll tell you what, though, I know who Harvey Birdman is. Same here. I know who Space Ghost is. And by the way, shout outs to Zorak passing away recently. Oh, dude, let me take hearts go out to off for that. Hearts go out to his family. Love. Love Zorak. I, I love Space Ghost Coast to Coast growing up. So, moment of silence for that. But right back into it. Yeah, I don't like the glasses on the new Bat suit. It looks stupid. Maybe he has it for one scene for whatever reason. And I know some people are going to argue out there be like, Oh, well, there's special glasses so he can see at night and this and that. Other Batman had that, and they had it integrated into their cows. They didn't need to put glasses on and sunglasses. What, what is what is he that? What, that one song? He wears his sunglasses at night? Don't, don't switch the blade on the man in shades. Oh, no. I'll tell you what, though. At least they learned something from Schumacher, and he doesn't have bat nips this time. That's oh, true. So, I mean, I'm happy for that. No bat nips. That is true. No bat nips, no bat credit cards, although... I don't mind the back credit card. <laughs> you never leave the cave without it, right? I tell exactly. You <laughs> Maybe he should have bat nips, so when Dark Side comes in, he freaks him out, starts twisting his bat nips at him, getting all sexy, doing his little bat 2 see with his cape. You know, it might be good. It might you be never good. know. You never know. <laughs> and, and I guess sticking on the topic of the Batman movie, what do you think about Slade? Uh, now, I can't remember. Is Slade confirmed to be in the Dawn, like the Justice League movie, or is that the Batman movie? Okay, so I do know a bit, a little bit about this, and I'll tell you what it was. Is um, Ben Affleck was? Um, I guess they're getting ready to do, do start filming and whatnot, or getting tests post. I mean, pre-production going on uh, the Batfleck movie, and he tweeted out pictures of test footage of what Slade Wilson, you know, would look like. In the Batfleck movie, and uh, I thought I was impressed by it. I love it. I, I mean, I, I I believe he'd be in Batfleck. I think Slade's a great villain, but I don't think he's Justice League level villain. Yeah, that's true. He Any is just one a man. single member of the Justice League takes Slade out. You know, that is very true. Now, and I watched Arrow. I watched the first two seasons of Arrow. I loved love the first season. Yeah, I, I like Arrow a lot, and I like what they did with Slade. I love that they focused him. Eh, the changing his origin up that didn't really bother me because I mean. A lot of heroes, a lot of villains have had their their like their like uh, stories change over the years, so I'm okay with that. Speaking of um, Slade, though, from uh, Arrow on CW uh, on there, they, the person they cast, I don't, know, I don't know the actor's name. I do know he looks like Joe Manganiello, um, and what's funny is Joe Manganiello is actually cast to be Slade in the Batfleck movie. And funny enough, because I think this Joe Manganiello, or whatever the hell his name is, I was. Mangello, I think he, I I think he was in Magic Mike. You know what? Don't there, talk crap about Magic Mike. Well, no, no. I watched it with my wife. Both of them, they're great. Magic, I love Kevin Nash. Magic Mike's horrible. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I guess the actor who plays recently, like a day or two ago, the actor who plays Slade in the uh, the Arrow show, I guess he tweeted out, "Well, if this guy's going to take over Slade, then I'm just going to go do Magic Mike." Which that's hilarious. That's funny. I mean, I'm all about it. 
I'm all about a Magic Mike 3. Anytime you can get Kevin Nash back in the movie, being relevant, just make sure he's alive. The Lord knows he I'm needs the money. It. I saw Kevin Nash at Stockton Con. Yeah, because the dude needs the money. <laughs> and I saw him too. And I told him, man, I, oh, I love you in Magic Mike 2. And he just gave me this look of just like, is this guy serious? Is he joking? And then Scott Hall gives him this look, right? And he's just like, Fagula. He just... <laughs> hey. There's I a, thought he was hilarious in Magic Mike. Hey, there's a reason why they call him Big Diesel, right? Right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's kind of where I stand on, at least right now, for the information we have on Batfleck. Um, I don't know if I'm looking more forward to the Justice League movie or the standalone Batman movie. Uh, I, I want to look forward to Justice League because it's going to have a Flash in there. It's going to have Lobo slash Aquaman in there, Dolph Thraki, you know. Called yeah, Chicago. it's freaking Game of Thrones. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Okay, don't mean to go on a tangent. No, I do mean to go on a tangent here. Here's tangent. the thing about new tangent. Aquaman. Why the hell do I have... Now, if you guys watch wrestling, you guys know this name. Roman Reigns. Hate him. Bo Roman Reigns, you suck. I'm sorry, you're not The Rock. You suck. Not Why uh, the Dothraki in Game of Thrones, which I barely started watching, barely on episode three of season one. Oh, that's a hot season. Dude that's looks, nothing but porn. Dude looks like Roman Reigns. Oh, oh, yeah. Aquaman also looks like Roman Reigns. It's like, okay, I get it. If you want Roman Reigns in your freaking TV shows and movies, just go hire Roman Reigns. The dude works for Peanuts. Maybe, and you know, I don't know. I mean, just like, I don't know how Roman Reigns would do in those movies, though. I mean, he's great, he's great, and I guess he can kind of act and whatnot, but you actually have to speak at some point when you're in the movies. You can't just be Yeah, a but big see, here's guy. the thing, though. Roman Reigns, it's known worldwide. His mic skills are god awful. At worst. least, the worst. at least in the movie, they already wrote the script for him. So as long as he can read, as long as he can read, and the great thing about it is, the Dostoevsky's don't even speak English, so he can just be like, oh, oh, that's it, Roman Reigns. <laughs> is that not right, guys? I mean, you guys out there know, look at him. Like, I might even, if I'm not too lazy in editing, I might even splice the picture of the three guys right here for you, because they look the same. I'm sorry, it's the same freaking dude, and that's not me being racist, it's just they look like the same dude. It'd be like having Kermit the Frog, Harold Ramis, and Ray Romano all in the same movie. Just the same, same person. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm looking forward more to the standalone Batman movie. Because I do like Affleck as a Batman, and I want him to do a justice. Justice to the movie. I want him to just do Batman the way he wants to do Batman, and let it be awesome. If we get... A Matt Damon Robin, though, it'd be great. Just Matt Damon Robin, and there's in Gotham fighting bank robbers, and there's Jay and Silent Bob tied up. You know, it's, it'll be a good time. Robin's possibly dead. We don't even know. Well, we know he's dead because in Suicide Squad, uh, when it shows Harley Quinn, it says accomplice. That's for the murder right. Of, uh, That's Robin. right. Accomplishments. Jason Todd Robin. Accomplishments killed Robin. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. That's right. So he is dead. So this Robin, this, this universe's Robin is dead, which. Eh, it is what it is. I'd chop a toe off, man, to be able to see that hour or a half of uh, Jared Leto Joker that's like somewhere on the cutting room floor. Now, see, I don't like Jay Leno's Joker. I think he <laughs> sucks. I'm sorry. I love Heath Ledger. We never got to see him, though. We never, we never got to see him in the movie, though. You, you got to see weird, uh, tangent flashbacks. Let's see. I didn't like him. I don't like the design. I don't like the look. I don't like the. the he can't do the laugh. So instead, he goes ah. He had that joke by a hand laugh tattoo, though. That's the new finger mustache. That's stupid. I'm sorry, but I don't want YouTuber Joker. True, true. I love YouTube, but I don't want YouTuber Joker. Like, Heath Ledger Joker, I understand it's a movie. If it was a real person, frightens the hell out of me. Jack Nicholson Joker, because Jack Nicholson's crazy, frightens the hell out of me. Don't yeah, know what he's going to do. Jack, a real person, Jack. You scare like, me, man. You, uh, you scare me, Jack Nicholson. Well, what's that dude's name? Jason Romano? Joe Romano? Uh, the guy who played, like, the, the comic Batman from... Ba uh, 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 Adam West. Oh God! Why am I? Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Yeah. Right. Man wore a mustache with makeup. Didn't even shave. So bad. Love him. Didn't even shave him. his makeup. But it's like I look at I look at this Joker. I look at Jay Leno's Joker, and I think to myself. And yes, I know what his name is, but I hate him that much. I will not say his real name. I don't like his Joker. He's not scary. He's stupid. My, I hate it. My thing though is of all the things that were wrong with Suicide Squad, mainly Captain Boomerang. That's you. 
throw Boomerang as your Captain Boomerang, I thought the Joker was the least of the problems in that movie. True. I thought shoddy editing and uh, underused characters. Well, here's the thing about the, the editing. Not, I, I'm not trying to defend the movie because I enjoyed the movie. I, I watched it three times. Play. Yeah, play. I enjoyed it. But they got a trailer team to edit the movie. They didn't get people who know how to edit movies to edit the movie. They got a team of people who know how to edit a two-minute trailer to edit the movie. So things are jarring in that movie. Things jump from point A to point B and you're just like, whoa, slow down movie. I'm still trying to absorb which I just saw in the past scene. But that's why it's kind of the... I'm not it's defending it. It's, it's not as bad as Avatar The Last Airbender, which is the guiltiest movie of doing that, but it was pretty bad. Very true. I, I do love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She hates that suit, but I love her in it. I love... we got to see the animated series suit on her. That was true. I, I, I love that. By the way, I did love that notch to the original Harley Quinn. I love Will Smith in the movie. Oh, it should have just been Deadshot the movie. I would be all about that. It really should have. Um... <sighs> Captain Boomerang, he, he was there. He, if you guys ever follow Suicide Squad, it always one focused. Boomerang. He only threw one boomerang. He had some knives shit he was using, and it was cool and everything. But That's fine. He's not Captain Knives. But, like, you know Suicide Squad, it always focuses on one or two or three people, no matter what the story is. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. I didn't need backstories for every person because I knew who people were. I knew who that guy was. I knew who that guy was. I know who all the characters were. So I, I'm not going to complain that not everyone got backstories. Some people I thought got really good scenes. Some people I thought I would have liked to see more. Uh, seeing El Barbecue just go from like this passive guy to instant like overkill winner. I liked his backstory. I loved the story they went with him. But at the same time, I felt like just making him Super Saiyan like King Strong out of nowhere. Uh, I was more concerned with how did his wife not know he was some like evil like villain criminal? How was she shocked? <laughs> you fucking see this dude? You obviously have seen a little bit of him. You slept with him a couple times, had a couple kids and whatnot. That is true. I mean, the wife was a retard. I, 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 I'm sorry, but she was stupid. How, how do you marry a guy, have kids with a guy who's all tattoos, ball up, wearing a white beater, looks like a walking advertisement for a cholo, <laughs> and you do and you and you never once think that he is a gangster? Yeah, it, it, it's just like I'm not trying to play the race car because I'm half Hispanic, but look we're at we're cholos ourselves. We we're half Mexican. I'm not cholo, ourselves. but I'm in Mexico. Well, yeah, but like, yeah. look at El Diablo. If you were dating that, if you married that, would you not once think through your head? This guy might be a gangster. Maybe. But that's How's just How's he always me. cooking dinner and not turning stoves on? Yeah, it it <laughs> was... No. Like, there's a lot of plot holes <laughs> never, in the you movie. You never saw he had powers? I'll tell you what, though. He jumped in his flaming mech, you know? And he was going fist to cuffs when... <laughs> Dude, he didn't yeah. jump in his mech. He was just straight like, Enoch Chuck. You know what, though? What Dude was a patchy <laughs> chief in the movie. Fighting the Enchantress's brother or boyfriend or whatever it was. I'll tell you what, though. What was it with all the weird scenes with the Enchantress... Where serious shit's going down, and then it cuts <laughs> her, and she's just doing this oh, weird little dance. Yeah. She's like Choro, the chew See, chew the chicken, chew the banana lady. I will say that. That was a bit weird. Because, like, we're supposed to be taking her seriously. Like, you people do not understand the power I wield. And she's just dancing. And she it's can't like, like the cheetah banana. And it's like, what is going on here? Are you, are you, are, are, do you have Parkinson's? <laughs> or what is wrong with you? Am I supposed to be fearful for you, or should I be buying a ticket to this belly dance? <laughs> I am. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I wasn't entertained. I was laughing. Um, me and my wife were having date night. You know, Munchkin was off with Grandma and whatnot. And um, we were watching um, Suicide Squad. You know, I had some sushi, watching Suicide Squad. And we were in fairly enjoying it, even with all the plot holes and all the bad editing. And I'll tell you what, though. I was busting up, dude. I almost had soda coming out my nose when I saw the Enchantress just doing the cheetah banana. <laughs> it was the funniest. It's the, the one thing I did take away from the movie. Hey, you know, no matter what you had wrong with it, you had a little bit of cheetah banana. You had your, your shout out to Charo. Like, that's the one thing I'll say about Suicide Squad. It had jokes. It had moments where even if they weren't meant to be funny, it was funny. I liked how the, the butt of every joke was, though. Okay, a rabbi and a priest walk in the bar and then Batman fucked them both up. Pretty much. <laughs> that's just how it was. Yeah. It, 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 it's what it is. But I enjoyed Suicide Squad. If you guys haven't seen it yet, obviously it's out of theaters by the time this podcast goes up. When it comes out on DVD, do yourself a favor. Rent it, Redbox. Watch it, however you... Yeah. Whatever it means, you know, on the internet, video. If you're a comic book nerd, you deserve to treat yourself to 
just watching it. Just watch it. Like, forget about the reviews. Forget about Rotten Tomatoes. Just go out just and watch it. Have a good time. Movie. It's popcorn flick. Have a good time. Yeah. But that's basically what I had thought up right now for in terms of comic book news. Uh, really quick, one other thing about the, the whole, you know, Suicide Squad, uh, Batfleck, Justice League. I'm a bit disappointed. It's looking like Superman's going to come back from the death well, and the new Justice League movie. Well, yeah. I mean, if you saw the original, this is what I like that they changed. Uh, the theatrical ending to Dawn of Justice, you see his stupid grave with a few pebbles of dirt floating off of it. They cut that out of the of the extended version, thank goodness. The extended version actually makes the movie washable. It actually is more entertaining. And it it's still a shit show, but more things make sense as to why this happens. Or why that happens. Or why the people believe Superman's evil. I would just like, like in the comic books when Superman died, you remember, he was out of comics for a year, year and a half. He didn't mention Superman in the other comic books, Green Lantern, Flash, um, New Gods, anything that was tying in. Uh, with the DC Universe, Superman was dead. You had no inkling of him at all. Everything was pretty much cut off. So you had that finality of, of the concept that he's dead and we've lost something important, you know. And then when they finally brought him all back and everything and all the, the convoluted of the four Superman and whatnot, you know, you were happy he was back finally. So I would maybe, maybe bring him back in Justice League 2, not Justice League 1. I'll say this. Because when, the second I saw the trailer and I knew they were putting Doomsday in the movie, I knew Superman was going to die. I'll say this. I'm not the world's biggest Superman fan. I cared more about Morph dying in the X-Men animated cartoon <laughs> than, Morph, I, than Morph. I cared about Superman dying in this movie. You left Morph! So I was like, I cared more about Morph dying in the animated series of X-Men than I cared about this movie. that a moment of silence for Morph? <laughs> That's enough for okay. Morph. Okay. <laughs> Need salt. But that's basically where I have, at least for this episode of comic book news. There is one thing I would like to get into of video game news. Because yes, this is a nerdy podcast. We are going to cover whatever we want. And in the future... Any weird nerdy shit that just tickles your fancy. Yeah. And in the future, we might even review games, movies. But I, I suggest, by the way, when we do that, stick around for those. When we do do those in the future. Oh yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, they're not going to be your average reviews. I'll tell you that. But I want to talk about... Something that's kind of controversial, and it's all in Nintendo's camp right now. Okay. Pokemon Sun and Moon, as well as the Nintendo NX. Now, I know on the Nintendo NX, a lot of stuff is just mostly up all in the air. All speculation. Yeah. But this is what I want. Because the NX stuff, I don't have much to say. This is what I want out of it. I don't know why you people out there were complaining about the Wii U. Now, a lot of you said that what you wanted out of the Wii was just it to be more powerful. Just want to look prettier. Yeah, and that's what I got from the Wii U. I got a more powerful Wii, and that was it. I'm happy. I love my Wii U. Great games. I have a stack of Wii U games this huge. It's a good Great. system. It is. So it's like, if you guys don't have a Wii U, go out there. There's a good collection of games to get. And you can get a Wii U with a game for like $200, I think, And more days. than likely, you're going to want to jump on there because it has really, really great games that if the NX is cartridge-based... It will not be backwards compatible. Yeah. If, if the NX, if all these rumors about NX are true about it using cartridges or no disk drive and all that, yeah, you're not going to be able to play any of these games unless you buy them from the eShop. But what I want out of this NX, because I still think it's too early to be getting another system from Nintendo, I want it to just be very powerful. I want it to be capable. I mean, if it has its special thing like with the touchscreen controller and the removable controller so you can play it away from the TV and all... That's fine. I accept it. That's that's neither here nor there because enough people out there already complained about that. I just want it to have good games, a nice third-party support, and just I want to see Nintendo succeed. That's what I want. I, I know there's a lot of channels out there that say doom and gloom like, oh, this about Nintendo, they're dying, they're losing money. They're not dying, guys. For every bit of money they lose on their consoles and games, they make up in plushies. Plushies. They have a war chest of money bigger than what you'd find in the Goonies. You know, I mean, it's, it's a huge war chest of treasure. I mean, and they keep making great products. Like you said, I mean, for every uh, system that might not sell well, you're going to make that up in uh, Yokai Watch, Underoos, Pokemon, yeah. TV dinners, all that stuff, you know, yeah. to make money. I'll tell you what, though. Um, they might not know, but I've known you s almost 20 years now, and uh, you've always been talking about with the um, Game Boys and the 3DSs, you would like there to be a way where you could play your Game Boy 
or your DS, 3DS, I know. Yeah, that, I know that, it's 3DS. You'd like to play it on the go, but you would like a way to dock it to the TV. Because you always loved with the PSP that you could play your PSP and hook it up to TV and play your games on the TV. Even so, like the GameCube. You could do it with the GameCube with the adapter. Yeah, so if the NX is a, um, all speculation, but if it is a hybrid mobile console that you can put in the dock and hook up into a TV and play your games on the big screen all nice, that's like your dream console from Nintendo. Kind of is. You've been wanting it for 10 plus years. And I'll say this, Nintendo, if you're watching this, bring back the Game Boy name. Oh, I love that. I love it. Just bring back the name of Game Boy. I know you guys said when you made the DSs that they were not going to take the place of the Game Boy. That was, oh, God. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Just bring yeah. back the in, name alone. Keep the system the way they look. I don't care. Just bring back the name. Just call it the Game Boy DS. I'll tell you what, though. If the new console is called the Game Boy NX, I'd show my hands. If it's called the Game Boy NX or even just the Game Boy, sold. <laughs> just but, take, my, take all my money. Take my kids' money. Just take it. Yeah. But really, I don't have a whole lot to hold that I want out of the NX other than it to just be good. I want it to be good, be powerful, the controller to be comfortable, have good battery life, and have good third-party support. If they can think, if they can figure out, basically, because basically it's looking like it's going to be a Wii U touchpad, right? If they can figure out a way to make that mobile and have like an 18-hour charge on it, that's all they've won. They've, just, they've won the next six console generations. And just so they got that. the third-party support, yeah, they pretty much won. They will, they, because if they do it, everybody will buy it, and the third-party support doesn't go to who has the best power. They're not these... Everybody's like, oh, they're these artists, people making Assassin's Creed, people making these Call of Duty, these artists making these games. They're not. They're looking to make a buck. Yeah. And if the number one selling console is a bar of soap, guess what? They're going to make games for the bar of soap before they make anything for the Xbox Scorpio or the PlayStation Pro. That's just how it's going to be. They're just trying to make money. Yeah. And, yeah, that's not much to say about the NX. Now, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'm going to buy the game. I'm buying it already. I'm just. But I'm not looking forward to it. I really? like the Aloha versions. I, I love Sandshrew. He's my favorite Pokemon. The fact that I'm getting a new form of Sandshrew, I can have ground and ice combo between the two of them. I'm in heaven. I love it. I love the the Sun Vulpix. I, I love... Or, or, or Snow Vulpix. Yeah. I, I love it. It's gorgeous. Ice Fairy type. I it, it's beautiful. Ice Fairy type? Like, it, it, it's beautiful. Um, I hate... I hate the new oh. form of Executor. <laughs> Man, he's got a long neck, man. You got something wrong with Littlefoot? Yes, I do. Are you like Sarah in The Land Before Time? You're racist against long necks? Yes. Nothing good ever came from long necks. They should have just stayed in the valley. <laughs> Littlefoot saved the day, man. Just stayed in the valley. He led them to the promised land. Should have stayed in the valley. <laughs> if he stayed in the valley, his grandpa and grandparents would not have died. Old age would have died. No. Old age would have gotten them. Yeah, but not the a meteor- T-Rex. The meteorite would have eventually gotten all of them. Not a T-Rex. T-Rex at least wouldn't have gotten him. They stay in the valley. That T-Rex was a bastard looking for a fight anyway. He they stay anybody. in the valley. Stay in the valley. <laughs> stay in the valley, little foot. Uh, Face your ever dinosaur by yourself. But, stay in the valley. But yeah, like, Sun and Moon... I, I see all this news about it, and I'm okay with the changes they're going to do. Like, I, I guess they'll be doing away with gyms, like gym battles, or, or traditional gym battles. It's like contests or something. That's... That's cool. Actually, I've got nothing against it. That's change up the formula, yeah. spice it up a little bit. Yeah, I've got nothing against that. And I mean, they're going to release new. I like a lot of the new Pokemon designs, but I hate more of them than I like. Just they had that giant um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Star Platinum like uh, mosquito guy coming in, dropping people's elbows and everybody. So yeah, it, it, it was a it, bit it, weird for Pokemon. Oh, by by the way, shout out to Harambe for making it into Pokemon. Like, you guys know what that ape is there for. Shut up. It's Harambe. But, yeah, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to say on that either other than I'm not really looking forward to it. I'm going to enjoy it, I hope. I can't get enough of it. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what he's doing, but, like, everybody I know besides well, him, we're just, just I, dying for it. I'll, like, I'll, I'll chop a toe off right now to play it. See, I think this is what it is. Growing up, I love Pokemon to death. Like, when Pokemon Gold came out, I was not waiting for it to come out in America. I went and bought a Japanese copy of Gold. So when we were in the playground Silver. at high school, I was playing Pokemon Gold while everyone else was still playing the other games. And like, oh, what are you playing? Like, On Japanese, Pokemon Gold. Japanese Game Boy Advances that my mom 
got for us off the internet, if you remember. Playing Pokemon Gold. Yep. And I could trade with the American cartridges. I did not mind that. I love that. But throughout my years, I stopped being a Pokemon battle trainer and I became a Pokemon breeder. It's true. I, I found true. a lot of fun in just breeding the Pokemon, getting those special stats, and just overall enjoying breeding the Pokemon. This guy's the best source to get rare Pokemon from. So it's like, maybe that's where it is. Maybe I just got complacent. I don't like to battle anymore. So I, I'll play I like through the battle. games, and because you have to battle through the games. Obviously, I'm going to battle. But what, after I'm done beating the Elite Four, and every time I play a game, I just breed things. That's just See, it. that's the fun, though, is after you beat the game, you go out in the actual world, and you meet people and new friends and whatnot, and you battle them, see who's the stronger, trade Pokemon, breed Pokemon, you know. You're all on that goal together, trying to um, become the best trainer that you can be, you know, to be the very best. I mean, hell, when I played Pokemon Y, uh, when I got to the nursery, I hadn't even gotten beat all the gyms yet. I stopped, I literally stopped doing the gym journey for a long time. It took so long to finally beat that game. Yeah, because I stopped and I was like, ooh, there's the nursery. I'm going to breed everything I want. And then I was like, you know what? I should finally go and beat the Elite Four. And by then, all my Pokemon are level 100 max, like stats, like the best stats they could possibly be. But that's what I do. I like to breed them. Do you think that Sun and Moon is going to be as big a jump for us that X and Y was? I don't think so. To be honest, it's going to have new game mechanics. It's, it's going to be a lot more in 3D this time. A lot more 3D environmental areas. I know it's going to sell well. I know it's going to bring new mechanics to the game. And it's going to be... I have no doubt that it's going to be a great game. Let's face it. Team Pokemon, Game Freak, they don't make bad Pokemon they don't. games. Even even games that aren't Pokemon are great. Um, Harmonite, fantastic rhythm game. Pocket Jockey, fantastic horse racing simulator. Just great stuff. And, and they just print money. I mean, everything is just Pretty gold much. press latinum they come up with. Pretty much. Everything they do, Pokemon Company, they do good stuff. But, I don't know, I'll play the game. I'll enjoy it. Uh, I don't really have any hopes for it. I think it's going to be the last time we see Pokemon on a traditional Game Boy from Nintendo. I don't think... I think once this NX hits, if it's a hybrid console, I don't think we'll ever have uh, two, two separated, you know, home console and, and, and a portable console. I think it will be the last time we ever have a Pokemon on a dedicated portable hand console. True. I, I do wonder one thing, because it's called Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I know with uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, I think it was Diamond and Pearl, and then we got Platinum. Yeah, yeah, you, you had like, Platinum. What's the third one going to be called? Pokemon Earth? Pokemon Atmosphere? Pokemon Air? Pokemon Dusk. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. You never know. Dusk and Twilight. You never know. They're never going to have Z. Pokemon Z is what a lot of people want it to be called. If it's called Pokemon Z, that's fine. But honestly, they missed the jump on that with X and Y. They're kind of bringing Zygarde back. I know there's going to be special forms of Zygarde again that you can obtain in this game. but like Yeah, because people have already hacked the game with those action yeah, replays to so, get those forms. Because so those forms of Zygarde are already in the <clears> game. Just non-legitimately. Yeah, you just got to yeah. hack the game to actually get it. To where, I guess Nintendo actually... Threaten to sue Action Replay if they did not delete those codes to actually unlock those things. The data is in there, and uh, Game Freak, just get those special events rolling faster. Get us those special Pokemon. Yeah. Japan has them forever, and then we have to wait 20 years to get special distribution Pokemon. Just throw that out. People eat it up, man. And people will pay for it. Yeah, just spit it out, man. Don't let Yokai Watch catch up. Don't do that. But yeah. That's kind of where I stand on Pokemon. Uh, Sun and Moon, the Nintendo NX, Batfleck. Uh, for this episode, I, I don't really have much else to go by because we don't have a chart this time. In the future, we'll have a list of articles and things like that we may want to cover. A lot more organized, a lot more better, better put together for you. But at least for now, you guys kind of get a flavor of what we're going to bring to this whole podcast universe on YouTube. Because we've been wanting to do this for a long time. Because we just want to give our honest opinions out there just to you true people. true honesty. Talk to you like you're our friend on the couch. Yeah. We just want you guys to join us on our journey. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. We hope you guys like, favorite, comment, share, subscribe, and join us in the future. Tell your friends about it. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Because this is the podcast that is literally going to rape everyone out here. Just come knock on the door. Sneak down into the basement. You know, hang out in, the, in our little fortress of solitude. Yeah. So, anyways, guys. Uh, this has been Green Cottle with my friend. I'm Rockman X4, and uh, tell them where they can find us on YouTube. 
You can find us at the DL44 cast. That's DL-44 C-A-S-T cast. Why? Because we give you the down low on all the nerdy forecasts. That's right. And remember, there's no scruffy nerf herders here. Damn right. Oh, by the way, we did take the death sticks. Oh, yes, yes. And we didn't contemplate our lives at all. <laughs>